are going to continue on our probability unit. Today we are going to determine if events are independent. So first, before we get into what independent events are, let's look at our do now. So it says consider flipping a coin and rolling a dice. So two things are happening here, a coin flip and a dice roll. It says, does the outcome of the coin, so flipping heads or tails, affect the outcome of the die toss? So if you're rolling the dice, no. Flipping a coin does not affect rolling a dice. Those are two separate objects. Now let's look at number two. It says from a stack of 30 flashcards, you do the following. You pick one, you do not replace it, and then you pick another. Does picking the first card affect the possible outcomes of picking the second card? In this case, yes it does. Because if you are picking the first card and you're not replacing it, you no longer have 30 cards to look at or to pick from. You now have 29 cards to pick from. So taking out that first card and not replacing it does affect what you get for the second card. Moving on, let's look at independent and dependent events. So independent events, when the occurrence of one event does not affect the outcome of another. For example, flipping the coin and rolling the dice. The coin flip did not affect the dice roll, so therefore those two events were independent. One does not affect the other. Dependent events are when the occurrence of one event does affect the outcome of the other. So they are dependent. That is like the second example that was in the do now. If you have a stack of cards, you take one out, but you don't replace it. You are affecting the outcome of the second one. So the key concept of today we're going to be looking at the probability of A and B. Whenever you're finding the probability of A and B, if they are independent events, so I'm going to actually circle this and again because that's going to be a key word for today. If they are independent events, to find the probability of A and B, you have to multiply the probability of A and the probability of B. So moving on to some notation that you might see, in probability we do use different types of notations when dealing with specific words. So if you're looking at the probability of A and B, so and is the same thing as this upside down U, which in mathematical terms means the intersect. So whenever you see this upside down U, it does mean the word and. Now the way I kind of remember this is the middle word of and is an N. This kind of looks like an N. So that's how I remember this. If that helps you, then that's great. So moving on to one other type of event that you might have, mutually exclusive. So when two events are mutually exclusive, it means that the probability of A and B equals zero. What that means is they cannot happen at the same time. It's impossible for it to happen. For example, winning and losing a race. You can't win a race and lose a race at the same time. So the probability of winning and losing in this case would be zero because they can't happen at the same time whatsoever. Another example is flipping a coin and having it land heads up and tails up. That makes no sense unless you defy all levels of physics, okay? So that's never going to happen. That means that the probability is zero for that as well. So when to use multiplication? Again, multiplication is when you are finding the probability of A and B if they're independent. Okay, now, so the key word for today is going to be and. 
when you see the word and, it's talking about multiplication if they're independent. So let's look at our first example here. It says, at a picnic, there are 10 diet drinks and five regular drinks. So I'm gonna underline that, that seems pretty important. And it says there are also eight bags of fat-free chips and 12 bags of regular chips. If you grab a drink and a bag of chips without looking, what is the probability that you will get a diet drink and fat-free chips. So there is a key word in here and it is and. Okay, whenever you have and, you use the multiplication. Now I did say you use multiplication if they are independent, but look at this scenario. It's saying that you're grabbing a drink and you're grabbing chips. Those are two separate events happening going on. If you take one specific drink, it's not going to affect the chips that you grab. So therefore, they would be independent. So let's look at these steps. It says, first, identify your two events. It's always good to label your events. I like labeling them as A and B. So that's what I'm going to do. The first event here was getting a diet drink. So I'm going to label A as grabbing a diet drink. You should always label what A and B is so you don't forget. That means B, we're going to label getting fat-free chips. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find the probability of A and the probability of B. So the probability of A is equal to. So if we remember to find probability in the denominator, that goes your total outcomes. So in this case, it'd be all the drinks possible. And in the numerator goes your favorable. So that's what you want. Okay, so outcomes, I'll just finish it up. Now, in this case, we're looking at drinks. If we look at the drinks, there are 10 diet drinks and five regular drinks. That means in total, we have 15 drinks. We want diet drinks. So out of those 15 drinks, 10 are diet drinks. So that is our probability for A. Now let's find the probability for B. So again, you use the same thing, favorable outcomes over total outcomes, but now we're looking at chips. For chips, there are eight bags of fat-free and 12 bags of regular chips. So in total, there are eight plus 12, which is 20 bags of chips. Of those 20 bags of chips, we're looking for the fat-free ones. Eight of those 20 are fat-free, so that is our probability for B. Now step four we're gonna multiply the two together. So we're gonna find the probability of A and B that is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now I'm writing out every step possible here because it's the first time we're seeing this. So now again, the probability of A and B is equal to, the probability of A we found was 10 over 15. Now if you want to simplify that fraction, you can, but we can wait to do that to the end. The probability of B was 8 over 20. Same applies for that. If you want to simplify it beforehand, that is totally fine. So now we have to multiply them. Now I'm gonna use the calculator. You can do it by hand. If you're doing it by hand, you're multiplying numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So you would do 10 times eight over 15 times 20. But I am gonna use the calculator just to make sure I make no mistakes. Once this thing loads. So while we're waiting for that to load, 
we're going to finish this, just writing up that last step. Now, if you want to change the notation, remember this symbol here represents and. So why don't I throw that in here? Let's give it a little introduction now that this is loaded. Now, you can use parentheses, but I like using the alpha y equals button. So we're doing 10 over 15. So 10 divided, oh, I did not mean to do that. Sorry, guys. Delete. 10 over 15 times 8 over 20. So times alpha y equals 8 over 20. When you press enter, it gives you the fraction. The reason why I like using the alpha y equals button is it will give you the fraction in simplest form. So we have 4 over 15. So the probability of a and b is equal to 4 over 15. So here is our answer. Remember, for probability, though, you can write it in different ways. So you can write this as a decimal. To get it as a decimal, press math, go to 2, which is des, press enter. That's it as a decimal. But that is a decimal that never ends, so fraction would be the best way to represent it. But if you wanted to do the decimal, you can. You can also change it to a percent. Okay, let's move right along. So multiplication can be used to test if two events are independent. If the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, they're independent. If it's not equal, they are dependent. If it is zero, they're mutually exclusive. So let's look at how we can use this. Okay, so test for independence. So again, the key concept is here. If the probability of A is 0.5 and the probability of B is 0.3 and the probability of A and B is 0.14, are A and B independent or dependent? So first, I just like having these steps here. It's kind of my mind, my process that goes through my head. So get comfortable thinking the same way, or if you think a different way, that's fine as well. But this is my thought process. So first, identify your two events. So our two events are outlined for us, A and B. First step is find the probability of A. So we know that it tells us in red right now. It tells us the probability of A is equal to 0 0.5. Less work for us to do. It tells us the probability of B is 0 0.3. And now we have to find the probability of A times the probability of B. So the probability of A times the probability of B would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.3. You can do this in your head or you can do it on your calculator. So let's do it in our calculator. We have 0 0.5 times 0 0.3. We press enter and we get 0 0.15. Now for step five. Step five says if probability of A times B, so that was from step four, which we just found, is equal to the probability of A and B, they are independent. This is what they told us the probability of A and B was. So the probability of A and B, they said was equal to 0 0.14. So we're looking at these two right over here. I'm going to put them in a little in a little bubble because why not? So, 0 0.15 is not equal to 0 0.14. So we are going to write that. 0 0.15 is not equal to 0 0.14. Since they are not equal, they are 
not independent, therefore they are dependent. So I'm going to write a sentence for that. So since the probability of A times the probability of B is not equal to the probability of A and B, A and B are not independent. Comma, they are dependent. Okay, it's always good to write a sentence or two identifying this stuff until you get familiar with the concept. So moving right along, let's do another example. So it says A and B are independent events. This is important, okay? Because they're independent, that means that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So we're asked to find the probability of A and B if the probability of A is 1 over 6 and the probability of B is 2 over 5. So let's do just that. So like I said, since they're independent, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So let's plug in what the question gives us. So we're still looking for the probability of A. Now instead of and, I'm going to use that notation. So A and B is equal to, why don't I color code this? Let's make the probability of A green. So the probability of A, they tell us, is 1 over 6. So I'm going to plug that in. 1 over 6. And why don't we make the probability of B purple? So the probability of B is 2 over 5. So here we write 2 over 5. Now the probability of A and B, you can type this in your calculators if you want, but this one I do want to do by hand. So to multiply it, we do numerator times numerator, so 1 times 2, which is 2. For the denominator, we do denominator times denominator, 6 times 5 is 30. Now we can simplify this, okay? So to simplify, you see what number goes into the numerator and the denominator, and that number is 2. So if you were to, to divide both of these by 2, just kind of a little lesson on fractions, you would get that the probability of A and B is equal to 1 over 15. Okay, and that's how you would simplify that. Another way to do this, I'm just going to bring this to the side. This is just some general knowledge. You can cross cancel. What that means is we can see that the number 2 goes into both 2 and 6. So we can divide from here. So 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 6 three times. So you could simplify it as 1 times 1, which is 1. 3 times 5, which is 15. Whichever way you do it, even if you use the calculator, you're going to get the same answer. Just some, you know, side knowledge. Moving on, it says the probability that Gary and Jane have a child with blue eyes is 0.25. That seems important. The probability that they will have a child with blonde hair is 0 0.5. Also, side note, is blonde spelled like this or like this? I see it both ways and I never know which it is. I always spell it this way, but then why is it written like this a lot? Just again, side, just question, because it just, just gets me sometimes. Same thing with gray. Gray is spelled like this sometimes and it's spelled like this sometimes. I like this spelling, so I use that spelling, but yeah, just... That was a little bit of a tangent there, but let's continue. The probability that they will have a child with both 
blue eyes. Oh, with both blue eyes and blonde hair. So I see a keyword there. And it is 0 0.125. Given this information, the events of blue eyes and blonde hair are dependent, independent, and mutually exclusive. Well, first, let's look at our answer choices. So I'm going to look at three and four specifically. Three says its answers one and three. So can the event be dependent and mutually exclusive at the same time? Remember, mutually exclusive means can never happen. Like winning and losing or flipping heads and tails. So you can't have dependent events and have events that can never happen at the same time. That just does not make any sense. Same for number four. It's saying that the events are independent and mutually exclusive. How can they be independent of each other but never happen at the same time? So that does not make any sense. So always use process of elimination with multiple choice. It's always a good way to go to narrow down your options. Now, we haven't done any math yet. We just used a little bit of logic. So let's get into the question. So we should identify our two events because remember, whenever we have and, we're looking for this. The probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B if they're independent. So let's identify events A and B. So why don't we make A blue eyes and we'll make B blonde hair. Let's find the probability of the two. So the prob, actually let me move this over. Probability, ay, 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 ay. So B, blonde hair. So let's find the probability of both. The probability of A, they told us the probability of blue eyes is 0 0.25. Now let's find the probability of blonde hair. Again, they told us that is 0 0.5. So we have to multiply these together. So the probability of A times the probability of B. The probability of A was 0 0.25. The probability of B was 0 0.5. So we have to multiply those together. When we do that, we get 0 0.25 times 0 0.5, we get 0 0.125. Now, they also told us that the probability of blue eyes, which was A, and blonde hair, which was B, is equal to 0 0.125. So again, I'm gonna put a little bubble around these because why not? This is our important information. Let's look what they're both equal to. 0 0.125 is very clearly equal to 0 0.125. Since they are equal, they're independent, okay? So since they're independent, answer choice two is our answer. Why don't we go through one more? It says on a given school day, the probability that Nick oversleeps is 48%. And the probability he has a pop quiz is 25%. Assuming these two events are independent, so it tells us they're independent. What is the probability that Nick oversleeps and has a pop quiz on the same day? So, and this tells us something important. 
the probability of A and B equals probability of A times the probability of B. It says that they are independent, so we can automatically do this. So let's identify our two events. So the, let's say that A is that he oversleeps. And let's say that B is that pop quiz. Whatever happened to pop quizzes? Those must have been enjoyable. So the probability that he oversleeps, they tell us, is 48%. Now, we never like using percents for anything. So we have to change this percent into a decimal regardless, okay? When we change this into a decimal, you can divide by 100 or move the decimal place and you will get 0.48. The probability that he'll have a pop quiz is 25%. Again, we don't do operations with percents, so we change it to a decimal. Now let's find, change the color. Let's find the probability of A, I'm going to change the notation, and B. That's equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So it would be 0.48 times, I don't want to mistake that for a decimal, so I'm going to use parentheses. So I'm going to use parentheses just so we don't mistake the multiplication as a decimal. So 0.48 times 0.25. Let's get our calculator. So 0.48 times 0.25 gives us 0.12. So the probability of A and B is equal to 0 0.12, but notice they have their answers in percents, so we just have to move this over one, two spots to turn it into a percent, and we would get 12%, therefore 4 being our answer. Okay, so to get credit for this class, you have to complete this check for understanding problem on a sheet of paper, show all of your work and upload it to Google Classroom. Have a great day, everybody.